Hello, everyone. Today I'm going to talk about uh, TrueMask IoT uh, mask wafer curve optimization. Uh, this is a new technology that can do full chip curve linear IoT just in one day. And also, we can write the, the full curve linear mask on both a multi beam mask writer and a VSB mask writer in just a half day. Uh, in this talk, you are going to see a lot of these kind of movies. Uh, they are basically a sequence uh, of a lot of different configurations. Um, so first, uh, uh, what is uh, IoT? IoT uh, is a inverse lithography technology. Uh, basically, it starts from the wafer target, then solve the lithography inverse problem. Uh, so you're supposed to get a mask that will give you the best wafer print. Just like in this movie, uh, the one on the right is, is actually the wafer target and also the simulated wafer. Uh, the one on the left is a curved linear IoT mask pattern. Uh, so IoT started uh, for more than a decade ago. Uh, the first uh, commercial product uh, was invented by uh, Luminescent uh, using a uh, level set method. And in 2006, uh, Dan Abrams uh, and uh, I actually presented this paper at the uh, SPIE Advanced Lithography, um, and I named it uh, as IoT. Uh, later on, uh, there's uh, another uh, startup called Gauda. They invented uh, a different approach uh, using GPU acceleration. And later on, Gauda was acquired by uh, D2S, and uh, the technology I'm talking about here is an extension uh, from that invention. Since then, IoT has been regarded uh, by all of the leading semiconductor manufacturing companies as the, uh, one of the core lithography technology. Uh, it has been used uh, in uh, 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 many critical layers. Uh, according to this uh, eBeam initiative survey, it has been used on some critical layers um, but in, not in uh, all of the critical layers. Uh, why is that? It turned out uh, there are two big challenges for to do full uh, chip curve linear IoT. One is uh, IoT program itself takes too long to compute. Uh, another one is uh, uh, takes too long to write uh, those kind of curve linear uh, masks. Uh, so the conventional or the mainstream uh, mask writer is called a variable shaped beam. Uh, it's basically a single beam uh, that can write a rectangular shape, uh, they, they call shot. Uh, and uh, uh, so uh, it was invented to write a, a Manhattan type of pattern uh, very efficiently, very fast. However, as you can see from uh, uh, this picture, uh, if you want to write this kind of a curvilinear pattern, uh, it has to break the pattern into many small rectangles or many shots. Uh, since the write time is a proportional uh, to the number of shots, therefore, to write the full mask of those curvilinear pattern uh, just takes too long. It's not practical. Uh, fortunately, the photo mask industry recognized this challenge. Both uh, IMS and the new flare, they developed uh, uh, this new type of mask writer called multi beam mask writer. In multi beam mask writer, there is an array of over 250,000 uh, beams. They all write at the same time. Uh, you can turn each beam on and off, uh, even uh, in grayscale. Uh, therefore, the write time uh, is a constant, no matter what type of pattern you are writing. Um, uh, and also, uh, you can write the whole mask in just uh, about like 12 hours. So that actually uh, solved the uh, curve linear mask uh, uh, writing problem and also enable the, the curve linear IoT. Then the uh, only challenge left is the uh, IoT program itself. Uh, as you know, uh, for the leading edge, even the full chip uh, OPC uh, takes uh, really long. Uh, typically, it takes uh, uh, like over tens of thousands of CPU cores uh, and you have to run it uh, uh, a few days. Uh, IoT is uh, at least uh, one order or two orders magnitude uh, more complex than OPC. Uh, and also uh, for uh, 
Traditionally, you have to do all of those extra steps, for example, uh, to write a math, to create a math pattern that VSB writer can write. Uh, you have to do this uh, mahatomization. Uh, then you have to re-optimize the pattern. And uh, also, you have to uh, split the pattern, in uh, the full chip, into small areas we call partition, and uh, give each, uh, uh, each partition to a CPU to uh, calculate. Then later on, uh, when you stitch them together, you, you have this uh, 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 stitching uh, boundary problems uh, I'm going to show you in the next uh, slide. Um, then at the D2S, we actually solved this uh, challenge. Uh, first, this is a solution for curvilinear uh, IoT uh, mask. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, we, uh, this is uh, based on the pattern I talked about uh, uh, from Gauda. So it's a GPU accelerated. Uh, it's much faster than CPU because GPU is a single instruction, multiple data. Then on top of that, uh, we have a new invention. Uh, you can imagine, basically, we call this uh, virtual gigantic uh, uh, CPU GPU pair. Uh, as you can imagine, uh, if you have a big GPU, you can handle quite large area. Uh, if you can make that GPU bigger, that means the area that you can handle is getting bigger. And what if you have a, a gigantic GPU, it's so large that uh, the area it can handle becomes a full chip. So the benefit of that is uh, uh, we process the entire chip uh, all together. Uh, therefore, we don't have these uh, stitching issues. As you see in this uh, uh, slide on the left, this is a conventional approach on IoT. So uh, the middle uh, line on the left is one partition, on the right is another partition. So each partition uh, is calculated uh, by different CPU separately from the beginning to the end. Although there are some, uh, they call halo, some buffers, uh, some overlaps. But still, at the end, uh, you, you see this IoT solution generated from the left partition. Uh, there is a sys feature, but uh, the one generated from the right partition, there is no that sys feature. So that's why when you stitch them together, uh, this becomes an issue. And the, the way to solve that issue is uh, you have to take the, this whole region close to the boundary and recalculate your IoT. But that will not totally solve the problem because you are actually creating uh, new uh, boundaries. And in our approach, uh, since we process the entire chip all together, uh, as you see from the, uh, the right picture, uh, that blue contour is actually our solution. So you see we don't have uh, any those uh, stitching issues. Uh, all of the solutions cross the, the boundary, uh, they are continuous. Uh, other than that, uh, there are actually uh, quite a few uh, uh, nice features uh, in this uh, true mask IoT. Uh, for example, uh, in this one, uh, we do optimization using uh, EPE. So at the end, we can actually get an IoT solution that meet the, the EPE requirement. Uh, as you see in this uh, movie, uh, we start the, the optimization. Uh, at the beginning, you see on the right, there are two counters. Well, one is actually the wafer target. Uh, the other one uh, is a simulated wafer counter. Uh, at the beginning, they are not on top of each other, but uh, you see uh, doing the optimization, they are getting closer. At the end of this uh, optimization, uh, they are exactly on top of each other. Uh, and also the blue background, uh, uh, one is uh, the cost function, the other one is a uh, gradient of the cost function. You see at the end of the optimization, they all actually uh, uh, get to zero. Uh, and on the left, uh, you see the picture at the end, uh, all of those uh, CIS features are generated. All right, and also uh, these are true mask IoT, the solutions are continuous and symmetric. So here I show you an example. This is a three contact, as you look at in this movie. So the three contact, uh, we are actually changing the pitch. And uh, you see in this, uh, when they change the pitch a little bit, uh, you look at the IoT solution on the right, they change continuously. Uh, and also the solution uh, supposed to be symmetric, and you do see uh, they're symmetric uh, along the, uh, the center contact. Uh, since uh, uh, our approach is uh, pixel-based, 
uh, we have to look at uh, uh, this uh, on-grid, off-grid, see whether the solution off-grid, they are still the same. So in this uh, movie, uh, you see we have this uh, array of contact uh, and uh, uh, we actually uh, we, uh, offset them, th them a little bit to off-grid and also we rotate them uh, and we are changing the pitch. You see in the whole process, all the solutions, uh, they are symmetric, uh, no matter they are on-grid or off-grid, uh, no matter what kind of rotation angle, uh, they are also uh, continuous. So in summary, uh, this uh, true mask IoT, uh, we can actually run full chip curvilinear IoT in one day. There's no stitching errors. Uh, the masks are curvilinear, they're resilient. Uh, we can optimize EPE down to zero or close to zero. And the solution is a symmetric uh, and is MRC clean. So it basically meets uh, all the uh, requirements uh, for manufacturing. Now let's look at uh, some uh, evaluation result. Uh, so we did the evaluation together uh, with Micron. Uh, this is the uh, uh, same array, but uh, uh, we actually, uh, this one we are using uh, their freeform source. As you see in this movie, uh, we are also changing the pitch, we are changing the rotation. Uh, but if you pay attention, you look at those uh, contact, uh, the LT pattern for the contact is not a disc, but it's like a Pebble. Uh, that's because of the the the, the source is actually X Y symmetric. All right. So this is the simulation result, uh, but uh, here is the real mask and the real wafer print. So you look at the movie. The one on the left. This is the actual uh, mask uh, written by New Flair uh, Multi B mask writer MBM one thousand. Uh, then on the right is a wafer print uh, printed at Micron using their POR process. Uh, you look at the, uh, the wafer print, you look at all those contacts, uh, no matter they are at the center or they are to the edge, they all printed uh, uh, evenly with the same size. Uh, and then you look at uh, the picture on the left, those are uh, some pictures for the mask. You see we have a very high uh, quality of the mask pattern. They are very smooth. Uh, very good contrast. Um, since uh, uh, this is a linear IoT, it's supposed to give you the largest uh, process window, so we also compared uh, the process window. Uh, as you look at uh, in uh, this movie clip, uh, this actually has uh, thousands of uh, some pictures. So, so it's basically the same array on the left uh, is uh, treated by uh, their POR OPC, on the right uh, was treated by our true mask IoT. And uh, they are printed uh, at the exactly same condition, uh, but we vary the process condition, so we vary the focus, we vary the dose. Uh, as you can see, OPC at many process conditions, they print really badly. Sometimes they don't even print. Uh, Sometimes they print with a different uh, dimension. Um, but uh, you, you look at the, the picture on the right, all of those contacts are printed very nicely, no matter what kind of per process variations uh, you give. Um, uh, we even uh, actually measure the process window. So this is uh, on another layer, is a, um, a cutting layer, uh, kind of like a random contact. Uh, so we measure the, the process window, we measure the, the CD variation. Uh, so this is a, 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 like a cup process uh, matrix, so we vary the uh, focus, uh, we also vary the dose, uh, and at each condition we measure the CD, uh, the spec is a, a CD variation uh, within 10% uh, changes. So you, uh, those are green boxes are basically uh, the condition, uh, the CD is uh, still in spec. Uh, then if you count the number of green box, uh, we actually more than double the uh, their process window. Uh, so th this is uh, very significant. All right, so the result I showed you so far basically showed we can actually do full chip uh, curve linear IoT uh, in just one day, and uh, those masks, curve linear masks, can be written by uh, multi B mask writer with a uh, very high quality. Then the uh, question left is uh, it's really, you know, this uh, kind of like a VSB mask writer 
uh, hopeless uh, because as I explained to you before, uh, if you do this uh, uh, the curvilinear mass pattern on uh, using VSB mass writer, the write time is uh, way too long. As you see in this example, uh, this pattern, uh, the shot count is uh, like over uh, 500. Um, just for this uh, central small pattern. Um, then we look at this problem again. Um, we, we like to see if we can actually uh, use uh, overlapping shot uh, and also simulation uh, to solve this uh, challenge. Uh, so basically the flow is uh, we first uh, generate the curvilinear IoT uh, mass patterns. Then we actually generate a, uh, overlapping shot uh, for VSB uh, mass writer. Uh, then it came to this uh, very important step. Uh, we are going to do a we call mask wafer co-optimization. Uh, before people basically optimize the shot uh, based on try to hit the best uh, uh, mask shape. Uh, but uh, here we actually we are going to optimize the shot for wafer EPE. That means uh, we'll optimize the shot, try to get uh, the accurate uh, wafer shape instead of a mass shape. Uh, there are a number of things uh, we uh, recognized or we realized. First is uh, those are small jokes on masks. Uh, they don't really matter because uh, they will be filtered by band-limited uh, uh, scanner. So as you see in this example, to print this uh, angle the line, uh, we can actually change the jog size from 170 all the way to 226. Uh, the EP error on wafer is still zero. Then if we change, increase that to 254, well, now you have a small EP error, but it's still less than one nanometer. Until you increase that to 310 nanometer jog size, now your EP is actually uh, greater than one nanometer. That means uh, we have a lot of freedoms. We can move those uh, jogs uh, around and also we can make the jogs uh, bigger. Uh, on top of that, uh, we can actually leverage overlapping shot. Um, as you see, this example, uh, the jog size is uh, 200 nanometer. On the left is a conventional shot. Uh, so we need uh, 120 shot uh, for this uh, uh, angle line. Uh, but uh, uh, if we change that to overlapping shot, we only need uh, about a half number of the shot, uh, and we still have the wafer EP uh, zero. And another trick we can play is uh, we can look at uh, uh, the uh, treat the cis feature and the main feature separately. Because uh, a cis feature, they are really curvy. Um, uh, they actually, uh, if we do the conventional shot, you, you need a lot of shot. So we like to use an uh, overlapping shot. And also, a C feature doesn't uh, affect the wafer EPE that much. Uh, then on the main feature, uh, we can uh, continue use uh, traditional shot, uh, but use a bigger shot and use a simulation uh, to actually minimize the wafer EPE. So here is a kind of like an example showing this uh, whole flow. Uh, so first, uh, you look at the, this uh, configuration. So we generate a shot, and th this shot is a uh, like a com uh, old way. Like basically, we optimize the shot, try to get the best uh, uh, mask shape. Uh, but then you run the wafer simulation, you do see uh, uh, compared to the wafer target, uh, we are two nanometer off. Um, here, what if we just uh, optimize the shot, means to move those shot a little bit based on wafer EP, or try to get uh, the best uh, wafer shape instead of mask shape. Uh, then we just have to move those shot uh, slightly. Now the EP becomes a zero from two nanometer, becomes a zero nanometer EP. So this is uh, the, the final configuration you look at. Uh, similar shot configuration, but now the wafer EP uh, is uh, zero. All right, then the next question is, uh, uh, can we actually make this uh, uh, very fast, like make the VSB even read faster than uh, multi-beam? Uh, so according to Newflare, uh, they give this a chart before. Uh, it shows uh, uh, if the shot 
density is lower than certain number, actually VSB mass writer write it actually faster than uh, multi beam. Uh, so we convert that number uh, into shot density. Uh, it turned out uh, uh, the magic number is uh, 36 shot per square micron. That means uh, if you can make the shot density everywhere uh, lower than 36 shot per square micron, then for the full mask, you can actually write it on their uh, VSB mask writer, uh, EBM 9500, less than 12 hours. That means even faster than multi beam. So here is the result. So the same array, uh, you look at this movie for the whole sequence, we actually generate the shot uh, and the, uh, of those shot configurations, we actually run the simulation, we optimize it, uh, we try to minimize uh, the wafer EPE. And uh, then uh, we calculate the shot density uh, across all those configurations. Uh, so that uh, blue dot is basically the shot density uh, that we, gener uh, we calculate. Uh, and that the green line is basically 36 shot uh, per square micron. As you can see, across the board for all of those configurations, from very dense to close to ISO, the shot density, they are all below 36 shot per square micron. That means uh, for any design, because any design would include the dense or uh, some ISO, but uh, this covers the whole space. So for any real design, you can actually uh, write the full mask uh, less than 12 hours. Uh, then the right curve, those are basically the conventional uh, shot number. As you can see, there are uh, basically three regions. Uh, the first region is really dense, so the shot count is uh, uh, many dominated by main feature. So here we reduce the shot count, we use the simulation uh, to uh, optimize the wafer EPE. Uh, the middle region, uh, you start seeing assist features. So now it's dominated by assist features, but here we use uh, overlapping shot and significantly reduced the shot count. Uh, then the third region uh, on the right is still dominated by assist features, but now it's close to ISO, so it has an overall lower um, uh, pattern density, uh, so our sh uh, shot density is uh, actually uh, even lower. Um, so overall, we basically can write this, all of those configurations, uh, less than 36 shot uh, per square micron. So here is the final movie I'm showing you. So this shows this uh, array. Uh, on the left, this is a shot configuration on the mask. And on the right is basically the simulated uh, wafer counter with the wafer target. So you see for all of those configurations, we basically can get this uh, wafer uh, print very accurately. So in a summary, you see now we have this uh, full chip collinear IoT. We can do it in just one day. And also we have this uh, new technique called mask wafer co-optimization uh, that actually can do the full mask uh, right in just uh, 12 hours. Not only on multi-beam mask writer, but uh, also on WSB mask writer.